Hi everyone, welcome to Road of Tanks with Stewie JP. I'm Stewie, you're not. And this is another extravaganza from Patch 920. As I clean up the replays, this is going to be four replays featuring some tier 9 tanks from Patch 920. A couple of light tanks, a medium and a tank destroyer in this one. And of course this is my old mate Ravi the other... Ravi the Aussie Seagull. Ravi in the AU251, the tier 9 German light tank. And have a look at it. It is an absolute ripper. It's a beautiful looking tank. He's got a couple of marks of excellence by the looks of it on that gun barrel. And of course, APCR is standard in this 90mm gun. 240 damage, 215 penetration, 250 with heat rounds, which is premium. He's running chocolate. Germans love their chocolate. And, uh, Ravi looking to get vision on these enemy tanks. He's already spotted one or two tanks and uh, he's going to... Oh, looks like he might hold his fire. No, he won't. Puts a shell into the Primo Victoria. That's the new Tier 8 Premium Swedish Medium Tank, which is a pretty fun tank to drive, if you ask me. Playing around here on the eastern flank, looking for cheeky shots into these tanks. I reckon he's just pulling back, hoping he gets unspotted so he can throw another German shell towards those tanks again. Will he get a side shot into the Lorraine 40T? No, he won't. The Lorraine certainly knows how to hide behind that ridge line. Primo Victoria again for another 244 hit points of damage. Ravi the Aussie Seagull from 1AR is having a ripper. Doesn't get spotted that time. Uh, so he's thinking, well, all these bushes, they're certainly going to help me. That the rain, he would love to get rid of that auto-loading premium French medium tank. Out of this game, zero walls to score. He's already picked up five, nearly 500 damage. He's looking at chipping away at these tanks. There's the rain again. That'll do for another 242 damage. Uh, six cents doesn't go off again, so he's... Uh, in a position here where we can where he can farm a little bit of damage, he bounces the Primo Victoria. Of course, the turret on that Swedish tank is pretty well armoured and well rounded, so he can certainly pull off some pretty epic bounces. I was lucky enough to bounce a, one of those big derpy tier 10 tank destroyer shells on mine just a few days ago and I tell you what it had nothing to do with my skill levels that's for sure it was absolutely hilarious when I got when that thousand block damage came up on my screen but anyway 1-2 is the score Ravi's just been lit again he's moving forward looking for these tanks he's found the uh, M4190 that M4190 quite happy to um, kick back on the zero uh, back at A zero he wants to try and do a bit of snipey shot he wants to keep those artilleries company he doesn't want those artilleries to be lonely I guess maybe that's what he's thinking as um, Ravi puts a shell into the German artillery piece the GW Tiger P two threes are scored Scorpion G on the enemy team goes down it's a tier 9 game five tier 9s on each team there goes the tier 8 German artillery piece it's that one tank you don't need to worry about blowing his head off. He's looking back, looking for more shots. Shoots towards the Prima Victoria again. The Batch at 1555555 gets taken out by friendly artillery, which is cool. Ravi the Aussie Seagull putting damage into the Bat Chat 25 TAP, the baby Bat Chat, takes him down to 241. One more shot will be enough. The T54 picks up the kill. The M4190 kills the enemy M4190. That'll serve him right for being so far towards the back. You're never going to win a game back there in a light tank, that's for sure. 6 4 the score now is looking at farming a little bit more damage. He's up to nearly 2,000 already, but he's just warming up. There's the Prima Victoria. Looking for shots. There must be a house there somewhere. That's what he's clearly. That's what he's hiding behind that ruined house. Artillery puts uh, some damage and stun into the Swedish Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank. And Ravi looking for the kill shot. Is he going to see Gullet? He is for 51 hit points. That's his second kill of the game. Seven for the score on Overlord. And um, here he comes. Wants to get into this action in the middle of the map. The AMX AC48 needs to be careful of that one. That's going to be a tank that could certainly tear him a new asshole. In the RU251, but that house is between him and the TD. So he's probably feeling pretty safe there. Looks like he might have just had a side shot towards it. He missed towards the T54E1. There's the AMX. 299 damage. Thank you very much. Brings his damage count up to 2267. And now that AMX getting down a little bit low. So it makes it a little bit harder to put damage into it. A lot of map pinging going on by the Scorpion G driver. That's what Scorpion G drivers often do when they're dead. They hang around and they ping the map like an absolute madman. Waterwain's on the enemy RU251. Cops a shot from the T34. That certainly would have would have hurt. Needs to get rid of this enemy RU. He's using this dead German tank as a bit of cover. Beats him on the reload. Shoots him again. Takes him down to a one shot. And needs to be careful of this AMX. He gets him for 390 damage. And he's now a one shot for the AMX AC48. 
Um, did that AC-48 and autoloader now. That was a pretty quick reload for the tier... What is it? The tier 8. French tank destroyer. Maybe that's changed. He's looking for... Looking to shoot him again. Pick up another kill. Three kills to Ravi. The Aussie Seagull. Just the T-34. The Type 59. And the VK-45. O2B left. He's down to 19 hit points though. So he needs to... Um, needs to keep that in mind. T-54 looks like he's quite happy to try and get some cap points. What kind of health is a T-34 on? 936. You'd think he'd be going for the damage, wouldn't you? 12 8 to score. The T-54 is capping, and there's the VK-45 O2B. Looks like he might have tracked him. Picks up some uh, assisted damage. This one, this one should go through for 259 hit points. What's his name? Wang Thomas. That's a pretty cool name. Two shells left. Two standard shells left before he has to switch to heat rounds. I reckon he'd be hoping for this kill. Will he get it? Yes, he... No, he doesn't. Reset the cap by a little bit, though. Now he's down to heat rounds. This should penetrate, surely. Picks up his fourth kill of the game. 13-9 the score. 4,134 hit points of damage. Down to 19 hit points. That's all you need, though, when you're carrying, like Ravi is. Ravi, the Aussie Seagull, the T... The LTTB looks like he might have the attention of the T-34, so Ravi makes the most of it and puts a shot into the back of the premium American heavy tank. The T-34 realises that Ravi's a one-shot, but Ravi beats him on the reload, picks up his fifth kill. The base gets captured, denying Ravi a top gun. There was only one tank left. He was on four kills, so he was having a pretty good game himself, but uh, not as good as Ravi. In the RU-251, the Tier 9 German light tank, the one which I enjoy playing so much. He's picked himself up an ace tanker mastery badge, the bruiser medal, duelist fighter, fire for effect, and of course the high caliber for doing more damage than anyone else and carrying the hell out of it. Look at that. More than four and a half thousand damage in this tier nine battle. Ravi the Aussie Seagull in the sh Bar Panzer RU 251, 29 shots fired, 26 hit, 21 went through, 4,575 damage, 897 assisted damage. Uh, only just made 65 credits with a premium account there, but he was he was down to premium rounds at the end, and he also had the chocolate running, which cost him uh, 20 odd thousand credits. But uh, not a bad battle at all on Overlord in the Tier 9 German Light Tank, Ravi the Aussie Seagull in the RU251. As we move on to the second game in this extravaganza featuring some Tier 9s, this is Bo B from Life clan in another tank that I absolutely love playing. It's a T-54 lightweight, the one that used to be a tier 8 but it's now a tier 9. Somehow I've got a mark of excellence on this tank, I don't know how, I think it's from when it was at tier 8 and you can see Bo B, he's got a mark of excellence as well which tells me that he probably knows what, um, he probably knows what he's doing on this replay on Sand River. Um, what was I going to say? He's on Sand River, Pope B from Life Clan. The um, bit of shit talking going on in the chat, which is not unusual. Again, this is from Patch 920. He spots out the Batch at 25T, as well as the Centurion and the Conway. Puts a shot into the Centurion at tier 8. Now, this is a tier 10 battle, so he needs to, he needs to be mindful. Uh, there's some pretty big guns in this. The T-57 Heavy, the Bat Chat, and the Stritchwagon 103B can certainly tear him apart in this tier 9 light tank. But... Um, OB, that's not gonna that's not gonna scare him. There's WZ triple one one dash four and the bat chat moving down the central part of the Sand River and Bo B thinks it's probably I don't really want to get jammed in the middle of that uh, that dry riverbed, I guess it is. Uh, rather he look he's looking clearly looking at the minimap. You can see the friendly Stritzwagen 103B is is heading towards the north with the object 140, the Prima Victoria, the issue 12254, and of course looks like there's an IS3 AFK at the base. Bo B from Life Clan. Moving up forward, the Object 140 kills the Korean pattern, the MKR, the My Kitchen Rules tank. He gets uh, a shot from that big T-57 heavy, uh, which damages his gun, but he fixes him. Picks up some asp assisted damage, some spotting damage. He's up to a thousand assisted damage. One zip is the score. Getting some more spotting damage on the on the low, which is just to the west, just to the east of where Bo B is as he's running around these ridge lines. These are these ridge lines here, right there, right there in the middle of the screen. There they can be some you can get some pretty handy spotting up there, but of course you do get a little bit exposed. And if anyone's looking your way, you're in a little bit of trouble. As he puts a shot into the back of the Japanese STA1. 
and pulls back though a little bit because he does get lit. Now the good thing about the T54 lightweight, that turret, look out, that rounded turret can really bounce shots if you're lucky, but still a light tank, you still need to be wary of any big guns that are in the game. You're not going to bounce shots all day long in it, but you will pull off the odd one as he puts a shot into the T57 Heavy, the auto-loading American Heavy Tank. APCR is standard, 250 damage, 208 penetration in the 100mm gun, 235 for premium rounds. As Bo B picks up his first kill of the game, getting rid of the premium tier 8 German Heavy Tank, the low. He's up to 927 damage, 1131 assisted damage, but he's just getting started. Plenty of enemy tanks in the middle of this, this riverbed, and I reckon Bo B's worked out. Maybe they need to exploit this eastern flank. Get rid of that T-57 Heavy and they'll be able to push right into the enemy base. 3-2 the score now. His repair kit has just reloaded. Oh, he'd love to get the kill on that Bat Chat 25T, but he knew he knew the Bat Chat with his good view range would probably spot him. That's why he pulled back. Uh, Centurion 1 looks like he might be going for the Bat Chat. Bo B keeping the STA-1 honest there, puts a shot into the side of the Japanese medium tank. It looks like he's gone down to make it a little bit harder to be shot now. The Centurion 1 clearly going straight for the Bat Chat. And it looks like maybe the Centurion 1 change, changing his mind now, pulling out of that little engagement. Worried that that auto-loading French T-10 medium might just clip him out. 3 all the score now. 1,209 damage done, 1,131 assisted damage. Looks like the Conqueror might have given up. He's already saying GG. People generally don't mean that when they say it. And um, teams down by one tank. 3-4 is the score. WZ111-4 and the VK100-01P just been spotted there in the middle. And um, may be thinking, well, these heavy tanks aren't going to clean up the enemy heavy tanks. I'll have to do it myself. Of course, only one heavy tank left on Bo B's team. Four of them have already been killed, more than likely, in the middle. The uh, the last heavy tank remaining is the VK100P, who's down there in the south southwest, which is a... I suppose it can work sometimes, but it looks like there's plenty of action happening in the middle. He shoots the VK100A1P twice. It bounces. It's a pretty heavily armoured tank, that tier 8 German one. That's the one that leads to the mouse. He gets some more assisted damage. Artillery clearly... Um, Making their lives a little bit harder, those heavy tanks, and he would have probably preferred the artillery to take out the WZ. He gets a shot into the side of the turret of the German heavy tank, takes him down to 651. Looks like the VK not too concerned about Bo B. He's more focused on the tortoise, and so Bo B is just going to keep chipping away here. Hope artillery doesn't shoot him. One more shot might do it. Artillery does the job, gets rid of the German heavy. He wants to find that WZ. He knows he's only a one shot. He was down to double digit health. Six all is the score, Bo B on 2211 damage. 1383 assisted. He's looking for that Chinese heavy tank, which is on very low hit points. He's got a premium round loaded. Fires clutch and lands his second kill. Brings the score up to 8 6. And I hope that Concord driver, who had given up earlier, is still watching. Because um, it's looking a little bit better now. As Bo B puts a shot into the side of the FV207, the tier 8 British self propelled gun. Moving forward now, trying to keep vision on all these tanks that these enemy tanks that are back in. Bo B gets spotted, puts a shot into the Conway. Conway shoots him for 370. I think that's a small gun on the Conway, maybe. I thought the Conway had a bit of a derp gun. Maybe that was a change in patch 920.1 because this is still from patch 920. I think it's just got that that quick reload accurate low alpha damage gun in uh, in this patch, in patch 920. That's the Conway at tier 9. 9-8 the score now. Tanks falling down like you wouldn't believe the Object 140. And the AT-15 both get taken out. He spots the WZ-111 GFT. That's a tier 9 Chinese tank destroyer. Pretty new addition to the game. Picks up 426 assisted damage into him. Moves back into this little puddle. He doesn't want to... Doesn't want to get... Doesn't want to cop too many big hits from these tank destroyers. Because he's only got 511 hit points left. But he wants to keep him lit for, for these other TDs that might be able to snipe him out. Three tank, two tank destroyers, a light and an artillery piece on the enemy side. Uh, two artilleries, a light, three TDs and one heavy left on Bo B's team. Looks like the T-49 on the minimap. Might be trolling that VK-100 01P who's down to 16 hit points. And... Um, Bo B now looking for these tank destroyers. Puts a shot into the stretch wagon. Uh, gets a bit more assisted damage. Looks like that WZ might be coming to try and push him. Unfortunately, that shot goes straight into the sand. 
Two tanks shoot him. He doesn't want to cop any damage. He picks up the kill himself. Three kills to Bo B. 3,000 hit points of damage. 3,000 assisted damage. There's a Stritz Wagon in siege mode facing the wrong way. Bo B's going to say, thank you. I'm going to I'll get behind you if I can. Tries, tries the tracking shot. Sounds like he might have tracked him. Auto aims on him. Wants to get past that gun. And one more kill. Is kill number four for Bo B. 3,625 damage done. 33, 32 assisted damage. Just artillery left. And Bo B's not stuffing around. He's going straight back to where he last saw him. Which was down here right in the corner. Taking this little bit of a high, ro high road here for the vision. And of course that Artie is not facing the right, right way. Bo B picks up his fifth kill. Artie dumps something on his head as well. And of course, Bo B going for a little bit of comedy towards the end on Sand River in that Ace Tanker Mastery Badge replay. The Tier 9 Russian Light Tank, the T-54 Lightweight. One of my favourite tanks at the moment. I really, looking, I really want to get that T-100 though, especially after seeing Safi's replay the other week. This one is an absolute perler. An Ace Tanker Mastery Badge for Bo B from Life Clan. He carried that one on his own. The Bruiser Metal Fighter, Fire for Effect, Patrol Duty for all that assisted damage, all that green and blue that you see on the right-hand side of the screen. That's gone towards that Patrol Duty. Second top by damage, 3,778 hit points of damage. Five kills, 14-10 experience. That Conqueror had a terrible game. And uh, I can't remember who else was giving up early on. That uh, That's the IS-3 that I think was AFK. Uh, I don't know, he did fire a shot, but who knows. He made some credits too, 55,500 credits with a premium account after tax in that game that went for a little bit less than eight minutes uh, in the T-54 lightweight. And he made plenty of coin because I, you know, I don't think he fired any premium rounds in that replay. A well and a well-deserved ace and a pretty good carry by Bo B in the T-54 lightweight, the Tier 8. Um, the tier 8 Russian light. As we move on to the third battle of this, there's four replays in today's video. The tier 9 extravaganza. This is Tommy Lau from SBNA clan. He's in the Stritzwagen 103-0. Now I've got this tank and uh, I'm a long way from getting the tier 10, but I do have it fully loaded. The Stritzwagen 103-0 came out a while ago now. It's the Swedish tank destroyer and that X thing you see in the middle of the screen uh, if he hits X you'll go into siege mode and that'll make his gun a lot more accurate but he won't be very mobile APCR rounds loaded 105mm gun 390 damage 288 penetration 330 with premium rounds you can see he's got no premium rounds there shouldn't need him in this replay where he's top tier looking for his first shot of damage into the RU251 takes him for 405 and you can just see how accurate this gun is. You can't see, I can't see what kind of equipment he's got loaded. But I'm tipping he's got some good, uh, good equipment loaded. He certainly knows what he's doing. Just kicking back in these bushes, of course, the Stritzwagen. All the Swedish TDs do have a pretty good um, camouflage rating, I guess you would call it. You would call it. Looks like he got spotted there. Bounces the RU251. Just kicking back there, waiting for opportunities. You can see, and this often happens on Fisherman's Bay, a lot of camping going on in the southwest. Uh, the southeast is slowly moving forward. Let's make the minimap a little bit bigger, just for my struggling eyesight. As Tommy Loud just kicks back, he's in siege mode. Of course, siege mode makes your tank uh, a hell of a lot slower, forwards and backwards. But when you turn left and right, if you've got binoculars or a camouflage let, camouflage net turning left and right won't uh, affect the camouflage net forwards and backwards it does and of course it makes you go a hell of a lot slower but the gun is it's like a laser beam it's just so accurate it's absolutely fantastic if you can get yourself into a position where you can start chipping away at enemy tanks it uh, it really does work well but his team's in a bit of trouble here Tommy Lau, only on 400 damage so far. He's blocked a shot, and he's got a little bit of assisted damage, but the enemy team certainly pushing pretty hard in the west. So it looks like they're just playing around in the middle and having a pretty red-hot go in the west. He sees the AMX M449 and thinks, that'll penetrate, no worries at all. Bounces a shot from the Super Pershing, hoping for the reload before that AMX pulls out of the way, but it doesn't quite reload him, or doesn't quite get to him before he pulls out of the way. Now, that AMX is down to 170 hit points. Auto aims on the T-54. Unfortunately, he bounces the Russian. He probably didn't aim, probably hit his turret, I guess. With the score on 1-3. He didn't think he was spotted there, and he copped the shot from that Centurion 1. 
but uh, still got plenty of hit points left. Comes with 1,500 hit points, which isn't too bad for a tier 9 tank destroyer. Just waiting for his opportunities here, kicking back in this bush on uh, Fisherman's Bay. He's hoping for the kill shot on the AMX M449. That's a premium French heavy tank. And uh, that's, I think it's the first fr French heavy tank that you could accurately call a heavy tank. It is... Um, has got armor, unlike a lot of the French vehicles. Okay, 4 threes the score. He's looking at this E75. Let's see him chip away at him. Takes him for 328. Gets 500 assisted damage here. Needs to pull back, though, because he does get lit. He doesn't want that T-54 to flank him. But you'd think the Patton, the Udez, and the M4 A1 Revelarusi should have that T-54 covered. As he aims towards that E75 again, you can just see the advantage of being in siege mode. You can see how quick this gun aims. So if you really want to pick out weak spots or put shots into enemy tanks like that one, he blew his head off. Killed him by Amarak for 659 damage. Brings his total damage up to 2,183. He misses the shot of the Centurion. Always good to get her like a revenge shot or a kill shot on someone who's already damaged you. Waiting for it, waiting patiently, fires blindly and misses. Super Pershing's up there. Of course, Super Pershing doesn't have the best gun in the world, so um, you could confidently bounce the uh, T26E4 shells in this tank, I reckon. One kill, 2,183 damage, 240 damage blocked, 850 assisted damage. Waiting for that Super Pershing to poke. I don't think he will. He's clearly getting focused from the southwest. Uh, the, his team are doing quite well in the east. The VK100 A1P has moved right out of view range, along with the FV4202 and the T28 prototype. Unfortunately, the VK100 goes down. I knew that as soon as I said he's doing quite well, I thought, oh, you watch, he'll die here. E75. Is, can we see the E75? He's uh, still full health, so he's doing okay in the city, as Tommy Lau from SBNA clan moves to the central part of the map. Probably wants to get some vision on this T26 C4. Not sure if it's really his job to do that. But he puts a shot into the side of the tower of the American Premium Tier 8 Medium Tank. Continues aiming at him, just in case he backs up. I don't think he will. There's two artilleries. You'd, you'd hope one of them could um, splash him. And, of course, he went back into trouble mode just at the wrong time. But it doesn't matter, because in the end, he gets the kill. That's his second kill in the Stritzwagen 103-0. 2,613 damage. 410 damage block. 12... 83 assisted damage. They're winning 7-5. So he's thinking, I oh, know I'm in a TD, but I'm going to start moving forward. I reckon that's probably the right thing to do. You don't want to stay on that red line the whole game in a tank destroyer. But then again, I'm certainly not the best tank destroyer player in the world. The cops one shot from the RU. Bounces the UDES. Picks up the kill on the tier 9. Um, light tank. No idea where that shot went. Towards the UDES. You think you'll... Should be able to get him now. No, he needs to focus on that Canavan. That Canavan just took him for 213. The auto aims and damages the tier 8 British heavy tank. Somebody else gets him. Looks like artillery got him as well. Can't really see the red outline. Looks like he might be focusing on that Udez again. Looks like the Udez has been set on fire. Get some spotting damage for it. Udez down to 23 health. Uh, he doesn't. Moves behind the rock just before just before Tommy Lau can pick up the kill, but the T28 prototype does the job. The E75 kills the Carnarvon. 10-5. You've got to be happy with this. He's on three kills. 3,257 damage. 1,656 dam assisted damage. That's in a tank destroyer. That's not too bad at all. Um, and, of course, a little bit of block damage too. 870 on Fisherman's Bay. Looking at the minimap, the Udez 3 kicking back in the southwest. And the rest of the tank sort of fanning out towards the northeast, trying to, to get vision on whatever might be left up here. A lot of tanks will be up in the corner. And that's why the Udez is pinging that map. Not sure where that T-54 might be. Maybe he's run back. He hasn't been spotted for a long time. Tommy Lau looking at looking where the artillery might be, up towards A3, A4. Not sure if he is there. He's looking for... because Will they be a one-shot? really is hard to say. 390 is the alpha damage on this gun. He hasn't switched to high explosive rounds. Probably because the GW Tiger does have a little bit of armor. Uh, probably better off just sticking with your standard rounds. You can see he's been chatting to his platoon mate. He's probably a platoon mate from a previous game and he's gone in without him for this one. And uh, it's always good to have when you have a good game when you're in a platoon. You can always... Uh, Talk about it and high-five each other on a job well done. 10-5 on Fisherman's Day. 
day. Fisherman's Bay, under seven minutes left in this replay, is up to 32.57 damage. 16.56 assisted, 870 blocked, and of course, three kills. He'll be looking for some more kills and some more damage, that's for sure. As the FE4202, he's not scared. Even though he's only on 400 hit points, he's looking for the vision on these enemy tanks that are clearly all cowered into that A1 corner somewhere. The FE4202 moving right in now. He doesn't want to get too far forward. The FE... I think the T28 prototype and the E75, they start. They need to start moving. Maybe even these people in the middle need to start moving forward because there's only six minutes can go reasonably quickly. And I think that FE has confirmed a few people's thoughts. The, um, there's no one left up there. Maybe the Bulldog and the T54 and maybe even the Udes have, uh, have run down towards the one line. That FE gets taken out, so if he's going to shoot, he needs to shoot now because those tanks will no longer be spotted for, for too much longer. The GW Tiger is down to 142. The Bulldog gets taken down a little bit. No one's shooting the FE. 10 sixes to score after that uh, British premium tier 8 medium tank got taken out of the game. Tommy Lau being implied by his platoon mate who's not in the game to come on, hurry up, carry the shit out of it. Send the replay to Stewie and uh, turn it into an absolute ripper. Plenty of tanks lit there. Scorpion G is not stuffing around. He's getting straight in there. Um, I'm not sure Not sure going in one at a time is the right thing to do. Tommy Lau looking at the Udes. No, nah, going for the FE. Bounces the Udes. Oh, put one into it. No, <laughs> he misses the shot. Oh, no. 11-7 is the score now. Tommy Lau, 11-8 as the Scorpion G goes down. Goes for the ramp. On the Udes, he's shooting him, but I'm not sure what's happening to these shells. 847 hit points left on the Udes. He does finally gets a shot. He takes it down to 282. Bounces the return shot for 390. Will this be it? It should be. Thank you very much. That's his fourth kill of the game. There's two enemy tanks left, the Bulldog and the T-54. There's the T-54. The Bulldog's right in front of him. And... He's still in siege mode, and of course it gets challenging, but he's, the Bulldog not doing the right thing and not running away properly. Picks up his fifth kill of the game, and all of a sudden the top gun is up for grabs. 4,334 damage, 2,000 damage blocked, 1,656 assisted damage. Of course, a lot of that block damage was from face-hugging that Udes. About half of it, I reckon. 14-8 the score now. Now all of a sudden everyone's going to take their brave pills and go straight for the T-54, that's what happens when the score is 14 to 8. There's only one enemy tank left. But that T-54 still got nearly 1,200 hit points. The pattern looks like he's going to put a shell into him. Tommy Lout, not stuffing around. He's saying, this is enough. Enough of this camping. Cops 263 hit points of damage. Looks like the second shot from the T-54 went into the pattern. And in the end, Tommy Lout picks himself up a top gun and carries that battle like you would not believe. Let's have a quick look at the battle result. It was a bit funny towards the end, but in the end, well worth it, and he picked himself up. Not only a top gun, but he also got the Ace Tanker Mastery Badge, a Bruiser Medal, Hand of God, Demolition Export for Amaracking, that uh, E75, Duelist Fire for Effect, Shell Proof, Steel Wall for all that damage blocked, High Caliber, and the Top Gun. He had plenty to do with all these guys' demise. Um... Yeah, and top the score charts comfortably, 4,501 damage, 6 skills for the top gun, more than double what anyone else did, nobody did, oh, apart from the Rhyme, apart from the Scorpion, double what anybody else apart from the Scorpion did, 13, 10, base experience, 21 shots fired, 14 hit, 13 did damage, 4,501, 2,000 damage blocked, 16, 56 assisted damage, not sure why he didn't get the, like a scout medal, did anyone else get it? Scout medal? No, nobody did. Made some credits too. Nearly 5,000 credits with a standard account. Would have been nearly 28 with a premium. I don't think he used any premium ammunition. We didn't have any loaded. I'm not sure why he didn't make more credits than that. But maybe because maybe because some of those shots, like eight shots, didn't uh, didn't hit the target. Anyway, not a bad replay from Tommy Lau on Fisherman's Bay in the Stritzwagen 103-0, the T9 Swedish tank destroyer. As we move on to the fourth and final replay featuring some T9s. This is the French medium tank. This is my old mate Apple Boom X from Crazy Clan in the AMX-30. AMX-30 being the, the T9, the new T9 French medium tank. Even though it's not that new, I think it was probably at least a year ago as we look at this replay. On Corellia, he's gone for the donut. 
the donuts what this part of the map's colloquially known as in the business um, he did fire it towards one of those lights or mediums didn't quite land the shot moving up here to be safe from those two artillery pieces moving up here into this little uh, semicircle, I guess you'd call it, as he looks towards the LTTB, the tier 8 Russian light tank, puts a shell into it. You can see Apple Boom X there, just showing off his two marks of excellence on the gun barrel. Waits for that gun to reload. That Pershing looks like a very nice target as he puts a shot into the tier 8 American medium tank. Cops a shot from the Centurion 7-1, who's camping back there where he's pinging the map. And he waits for that gun to reload. Gets the assisted damage as artillery gets rid of the Pershing. And that brings the score up to 1-zip. Two zero now as the Tiger One goes down, and uh, Apple Boom X. Who says? Who says? French tanks don't have any armor. He bounces a shot from the Conqueror at T9. That's a top T heavy tank there that he bounces that shot from. Looks for the tracking shot on the Conqueror. Doesn't quite get it, but he does pick up another 400 odd damage. His damage count's already up to 1882. Just misses out on the kill shot as the friendly Conqueror picks up the kill on that tier nine British. Heavy tank shoots the LTB, LTTB in the back, tracks him, is he going to ram him? Oh, nearly as the Bulldog does it. He does get stunned a little bit by the enemy artillery, but they're winning four zip, nothing to panic about here. Looks like he's going to kick back up here, back towards the donut. Looking at the minimap, looks like everybody's sort of pushed. Everybody's followed Apple Boom X down this southeastern flank. There's a few enemy tanks left over there, the Oni, and of course the... AMX M449, Liberté tank, the premium, heavily armoured, French tier 8 premium tank. Uh, four zip, no rush, uh, Apple Boom X, he says, no rush, I'm just going to uh, work out what we're going to do. Have a bit of a look on the map, a Leo's just been spotted on the other side of the map, but he knows he won't have the uh, the render range to kill him. Running out here, does get spotted, he doesn't want to get shot by the ONE, even though it's only a tier 7. If that penetrates the back of his tank, he'll be in a world of strife. Give some good advice to his teammates to push while he goes back he wants to take care of this leo as well as his t30 the tortoise can't do it by himself the tortoise won't have the vision and he um, that t30 could certainly derp the shit out of the tortoise so it looks like apple boom x from crazy clan is going to move back to spawn and try and help all these ta these tanks they're not moving the saint emile the t25-2 and the a44 they're all happy just to kick back and camp the base with the score on five zip the guys in the southeast Doing a very good job. They've won that push. It's just the AMX left over there. Looks like all the rest of the enemy tanks are either camping base or going for the northwest as he drives through those explosive boxes there, which always gives me a slight heart attack. Uh, looks like he's going for this ditch here near where the Leo was last spotted. The Leo being the T7 Swedish medium tank. I reckon if he gets rid of the Leo, uh, he'll be able to out vision, out maneuver, and out play the T30 because he's an absolute champion, this bloke, Apple Boom X from Crazy Clan. Even though he's raged in chat a bit, he just, he's probably just looking at the score. It's 5-1, and there's what there's five or six tanks kicking back at base. So he says, right here, I'll get rid of this Leo. Who cares if he shoots me once or twice? Artillery clearly is aiming where Apple Boom X is. He picks up his first kill, getting rid of the T7 Swedish medium tank. Looks like it might just be the T30 left over here as Artillery drops a turn on his head in the AMX-30. Only loses 190 hit points, though, because it's only the T7. American artillery piece. The Saint Emile snipes the T30. Uh, the T29 goes down. In that push in the east, still just the one enemy tank over there. You'd think they'd be winning that one as Apple Boom X puts 363 hit points of pain into the Centurion 7 1 at tier 9. He wants to keep that tier 9 lit because you want to get rid of the top tier tanks if you can, so he shoots him again. And like I said in, a, in the other one of the other replays, nothing better than getting a revenge shot into somebody who's already um, put damage into you. Now he can't fix his crew for it because he's. The, the, the med kit is still on the cooldown. The score 7-3 now. There's a Scorpion G getting kills on the enemy team. He's on two kills. And that Scorpion G clearly kicking back here somewhere and sniping out whoever's pushing on this AMX. No idea why they don't just go together and get him. It's one versus five up there. Two TDs. Looks like they're going out here trying to get some snipey shots onto this Centurion. Should Apple Boom X find him? And it uh, looks like he's not going to stuff around. He's going to go searching for the British medium tank. He's only on about 300, I think. And, of course, the gun is a 105mm gun. 390 
damage. 248 penetration, that's with APCR. Heat rounds is 300, which is the premium ammunition. Looks over this ridge line, searching for the Centurion 7-1. Can't see him. Continues to look. The T-34-2 GFT gets spotted and gets blown apart by Apple Boom X. Only 87 hit points, but it's his second kill. Uh, of course, artillery dropped something on his head. Or maybe it was one of those Scorpion G sniping from the donut. That AMX M449 still hasn't been killed. They're just, looks like they're just playing with him. Of course, we can't see the health on the Oni or the Super Pershing. So maybe maybe they're at a, at a health advantage. 817 hit points that uh, Centurion one's on. But uh, not anymore. He's down to 420. Somebody else hits him. Oh, there's that artillery piece. Load, 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 he says. Load, load, load. Bang. Thank you. Kill number three for Apple Boom X from Crazy Clan, getting rid of the M12, who has shot him twice, looks like the A44 is yellowing towards the Centurion, someone's, uh, someone's just bounced, will Apple be able to get the kill, he will, that's his fourth kill of the game, brings the score up to 10-3, and now they've got to deal with these campers before, are they ever going to kill that AMX M449, he's been there, he's been lit the whole game, uh, now we can see what kind of health he's on, he's on 177, Oni and the E4, they, they don't look like they're on bad health, but clearly they've been sniped out by the camping tank destroyers, and uh, maybe that's why they're a little bit hesitant to move forward. Apple Boom X from Crazy on 4,469 damage, 400 block, 1536 um, assisted damage. He's looking at the SU 12244, takes him down to 15 health. Unlucky not to get the kill. Now he's moving forward. He wants some more damage. You can see artillery. Artillery will do. Uh, we'll shoot the TD first. The T26E4 E4 snipes out the artillery. He's on four kills. I think the top gun's pretty much out of the question as the AMX M449 finally goes down to the ONE. Apple Boom X not stuffing around here. Goes for the ram kill and the shoot kill. He kills him anyway. Five kills in the end. A pretty big carry there on Corellia. A lot of... I think there are a few passengers in that replay. Let's have a look at the post-game battle result. An ace tank, a mastery badge from the old mate Apple Boom X. The bruiser battle for doing some module damage. Duelist fighter, five for effect in the high caliber. Plenty of tanks there. In fact, he pretty much did it on his own. Let's have a look. 5,257 hit points of damage for his five kills. 1586 base experience. The Scorpion did 3-3. Three, three. Only two other tanks did more than 1,000. A lot of passengers there. And when you list it by damage, gee whiz, there's a few there that uh, really... Anyway, let's have a look. 20 shots fired, 17 hit. They all did damage. Nothing wrong with the accuracy of that gun. 15,000 credits after tax with a standard account. Would have been nearly 44 with a premium. Eight minutes that went for. 20 shots fired, 17 hit. They all did damage. 2,616 assisted damage. Not sure why he didn't get the scouting medal for that or one of those patrol duties or something like that. But anyway, an absolute ripper from me, old mate Apple Boom X. Thank you very much for the replays, lads. Apple Boom X, Tommy Lau, uh, Ravi, the Aussie Seagull, and Bo B. In the lights, the medium and TD. A tier 9 extravaganza. Thank you very much for watching, lads. Take care and see you all next time.